Living Adaptive. The goal is to adapt and thrive despite the adversity you face. You're going to have to have that little voice inside of you trying to push yourself. I set a vision for myself and now I'm seeing it come to fruition. I'm grateful for losing my leg. There's just some things you must endure in life. You might crash. You can find a purpose in your suffering. I'm not going to stop. You do everything you possibly can. We want to change the world. I'm going to adapt to it and make it the way it works for me. Take what it is from life that you want and enjoy it. Yo, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to Living Adaptive. Thank you for being here. This is Scott Davidson. And just so you know, living underscore adaptive is where you can find me on Instagram. Also, Living Adaptive on Facebook and livingadaptive.com on the web so you can find me there today we have a really cool guest she's on the rise this is christy gray christy gray is a content creator an advocate and a speaker and you're gonna learn all about her her story and how she's growing her own platform christy what's up how are you hey thank you for having me <laughs> that is a great looking hat you have on so i'm gonna take care of that getting one of those after we're finished here thank you christy so just so everybody knows that's really cool christy gray to say that this hat, this hat that you see right here, I'm not selling these shirts right now. I didn't print those off, but you know, I get, I get them printed for like $12, $13 a hat and then I sell them for like 25 bucks and I cover all the production costs and then we send it to the nonprofit we're supporting. Right now we're supporting the Range of Motion Project because I climb for them and I love what they're doing. They have a clinic down in Ecuador and they're outfitting amputees with prosthetic legs and they're doing it at like $1,000 a leg. Like that's never happening in the States. It's a pretty amazing thing. Let's jump right into this. Let's jump right into this because I was gonna get into your story first, but one thing people need to know is you're building this awesome content creation machine. What is it all about? Okay, so I am obviously a right below the elbow amputee. And when you visit my channel, you kind of get an insight about what that is really like. Uh, there's good, there's bad, but mostly you know, I try to make it good and, and a lot of fun. And so that's kind of where, what you get when you visit me. Your channel is getting a lot of views. I mean, you've broken a hundred thousand mark for sure. And it's just growing faster and faster. And it's a pretty amazing process. But like when I talk to someone like you, that's grown it, that's put in the hard work. I often see others that want to do something similar. They want to grow their own content, especially in the adaptive world. They want to tell the story and and so, and nonprofits, tons of nonprofits are reaching out saying, how do I start my own podcast? How do I vlog? How do I do that? How does somebody get involved so they can do like what you're doing? How do they do that? Definitely tell your story. We, we need to be heard and it's a great thing to be heard. Like with me, I just grab my telephone, my tripod, a microphone. My tripod is held together with some duct tape and a Home Depot paint stick. And so if I can do it, you can too. Be heard. Yeah, I've seen the picture of your tripod where it's being held together. <laughs> like if I could turn the camera around without messing everything up, same system, same ring lights, stuff like that. Like it's very possible to build your own platform. I've helped a lot of people in the adaptive world start their own podcast, but also outside of the adaptive world. And it's a grind. Now on the vlogging side, that's an extreme grind too. That requires a ton of work to get out there and be creative and at the same time do it well enough that people want to watch you know how much work do you put into your channel oh my goodness it is a process it's something that i truly am passionate about i love it and so that kind of that kind of gives you a little push to go ahead and get it done but it's a lot of work i do put a lot of time and, and invest a lot of thought into what i'm doing yeah hey your injury story is pretty wild which Hey, viewers or listeners too, you know, we're a video show too now. So I should mention when I say viewers, um, that's why. And so if you want to see Christy Gray's story of being injured, that's the first time I encountered Christy is I went to her channel and saw the injury story. You did a really good job telling it, but like, can you share with us? Like you're not congenital. You didn't end up in the adaptive world, you know, at birth, like a lot of us, what happened? Okay, yeah, so it, it all started out, you know, my boyfriend and I, we were kind of riding on a jet ski and we hopped off for a minute, you know, and, and he said, here comes a boat. And I, I was like, oh, no, what? And he's like, no, here comes a boat. And it ran slap over me. At that time, I did not even realize that I was about to have to climb up on the jet ski. And when I did, my hand just flopped back. And but I climbed on it. I rode it back to a pier climbed up on the pier and you know how when somebody tells you to stay awake stay awake yeah. on the way to the hospital that's what i was doing was trying to really stay awake 
when we got there, oh my gosh, I just started just like going into convulsions. And it, I mean, it was, it was a very scary moment. When they pulled me out of the car, they had to put me back because my leg was just hanging there. So it wasn't just, it just wasn't the hand thing. It wasn't just the leg thing. There was a lot of other things going on too. So it was, it was something that I really had to stay awake and really try to kind of keep, keep together, even though I was falling apart. There was actually um, one of my fingers that was cut off and is still in the lake. Wow. <laughs> what a story. Yeah, that's a crazy story. When you tell it, you're very comfortable with it. How long did it take to be like comfortable to tell such a traumatic situation? I mean, this is like legit huge trauma, you know? Right. Yeah. So it 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 actually there was there's a lot of little steps that I took to get to where I am today. But the biggest step was, you know, when I had to do something, and and so I decided to go ahead and I, I became a substitute teacher, and and there is nothing like walking in to a room full of curiosity, right? So I would take I would take a deep breath before I walked into that room, and I'd say. If a boat can't take you out, a room full of sixth graders don't stand a chance. You got this, Gray, <laughs> right? Yeah, and yeah. so, you know, I kept, I worked as much as I could. And, and you're dealing with all kinds of great personalities and different situations and questions. And, and so that was kind of that, that point where I really started. I was, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. When I am, when I'm at work, I'm planting seeds and not even have to say a word about it. People see me working and they see me doing my thing and they're like, oh, Miss Gray, you're, you know, and so I love that part. You're not shy. You hit the front lines. You know, it's something that we've talked about offline is that you hit the front lines. You speak about your adaptations. You speak about them a lot and you don't, you're not shy. You don't shy away from difficult questions and other things like that. How'd you get comfortable to that point where you could talk about, hey, I'm an amputee here. Check this out if you want to learn about this. How'd you get comfortable like that? Of course, I talk about work a lot. It's a great thing for me. I have these two wonderful ladies, and they were like, oh my gosh, tell your story. I was like, they said, no, tell your story. You can really help a lot of people. So that was like that, that first little initial thing. And, and so after I told the story, and then I started getting feedback and just all these great comments and, and likes, and oh, thank you, That that's kind of what, broke the ice and kind of got me to where I was, I'm like, okay, this is, this is good. I can do this. We talk a little bit of, of this offline. So you're not too surprised about this. So people listening to so you get some wild questions. I get wild questions. I get questions all the time. Uh, some of them like pertain to like, um, do you wear shorts? Like what was dating life like when you're a kid or, or things like that. But you get some wild questions. Now that you're on the front lines, you get a ton of them. What kind of questions are you getting? Okay, so one thing I get a ton of marriage proposals, so that's that's a lot of fun. Um, but mine actually have happened in in real life. Like one time, I had a guy come up to me, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, you were so beautiful! I would just cut both of your legs off too, so you couldn't go anywhere." Oh man, damn! <laughs> wow, gee. But now that doesn't compare to one time I was in, it was like Walmart or the grocery store and I'm standing there and I have this guy, he comes up to the right side of me and he's asking me kind of what happened. And, and it was, it's kind of like, it'll take you by surprise. It still throws me off a little bit. So, but I was looking over and as I was looking over, he took both of his hands and grabbed my arm and began to caress my arm. And I was like, <gasps> No, oh, no, we do not do that <laughs> at all. <laughs> no, it was like he took a boob grab or something. I felt violated. I was like, no, this is mine. <laughs> Stay back. My turn. Yes. Um, I had something similar like that happen all the time. Something similar happened all the time. People would come up because I have really skinny ankles and they'd wrap their hands like I'm like just standing there. I'm like, dude, I hardly know you. What are you doing? They're like, oh, they're just skinny. I'm like, don't touch me. Like, this is crazy. People are nuts, man. People are nuts, especially um, in like on the outside to the adaptive world. Amputees get it pretty bad. People with feet disorders like myself get it pretty bad. The world is nuts, man. People need to chill out a little bit. Anyways, how about something serious, though? I think this one's really important because like this gives an idea of who you are. And a lot of times, I mean, you've, you've talked a lot, you're a speaker, you're a content creator. So you've had a lot of your story out there, but there's stuff that's not known about you that maybe like, what would you share that people don't know about you? That's not caught in other mediums so far. 
Okay, so one thing, one question I do get asked a lot is how old am I? <laughs> I'm not ready to go there yet. I'm just not ready to do that. I don't know why. I just don't want to do it. I'm one 21. Thing, <laughs> yes, that's a good answer. I might roll with that. But one thing that I, one thing on a serious note is I do deal with anxiety and it's pretty bad, but I try to stay on top of it. I was, I take it seriously. My mental health, I have worked hard to get to where I am and I won't go back. So when I feel that it's getting to a point that I need help, I'm going to reach out and I'm going to seek help and I'm going to talk about it. Do you think like for me, okay, I'm going to share this too, is that for me, anxiety was really, when I was a baby and a toddler, I couldn't stand the color hospital green, like that green, the scrubs, because I guess maybe because of all the visits or whatever. But I feel like that type of reaction I've had to a lot of stress situations, it took a long time for me to get really comfortable with that anxiety. I, I think a lot of us share it that have been through either like something traumatizing, multiple surgeries or treatments or something or an accident or whatever. I think that's pretty common and healthy. What are you doing with your platform in the future? Like we have so much stuff that we can see right now about like your story right now and what happened in the past and stuff. Like, where are we going? Are we going to see you on TikTok more or what? Yes. So I am going to branch off and try working on that some. I'm actually going to continue to spread limb difference awareness anywhere that I can. I want to work with some adaptive clothing and products. And then I also am enjoying and want to continue developing just some awesome friendships and relationships. And I think I'm off to a pretty good start. Yeah, you're doing solid. I mean, you're running with us on a We Felt Like Running movement. By the time this airs, that will have happened but you're running with us and you're really getting involved out there. That's something I wanted to ask you before is like, what, like, did you ever feel like you identified with like the adaptive community in the past? Or do you feel like you identify with it now at all? Like, because you're super adaptive. I mean, you really are. You're the core word of adaptive, man. You make it happen despite stuff. But did you identify with it or are you like on my own nation? I didn't identify with it, but it, knowledge is power. I didn't really know. And so so now I just kind of feel like it's it's coming. I'm getting there. I'm excited about that race. So I'm looking forward to that. What's your favorite video you've uploaded? Well, now I know that what does it feel like? Because I did a, a video where I talk about, hey, what does it feel like? So that one's doing pretty good. What uh, does it one, feel like? I'm sorry. I don't want to hack your video, but like briefly, like what does it feel like in your case? Well, like. What does it feel like? Okay, so it feels like my hand, it feels like this hand is in a in a fist constantly and it just and I can move my fingers just a little bit. And I move each individual finger. I can feel every single inch, every single centimeter of my fingers. Mm -hmm. It's kinda like a um Kind of like it's still there, but the one thing about it is, like, I have a button that I push at work or whatever, and I can put my hand, but I have to look at what I'm touching because I can't tell. So wow. even though, so it's kind of like a, maybe like a paralyzed hand, but I still have to look. That's just something that. I feel like I'm kind of lucky in some ways. It sounds odd to be born this way, although like the surgeries butchered me and made me way more worse at times. You know, like in some ways. But like, I feel like, you know, if you're, if you spend your whole life with like, this is what it is, you know, this is what it is. When you learn to walk with what you have, I think it's a little bit easier than somebody that has gone through an accident in a, in a lot of ways. I see the people that have gone through accidents. It's a big adjustment, phantom pains, everything that you're dealing with, or it's just a health condition, osteosarcoma or something where you lose a leg or something. I feel like you guys mm -hmm. have an uphill battle there. Yeah, for me, when this happened to me, this actually felt, the, the best way I can describe it, or I've always described it, is when this happened to me, it was devastating. It felt like my, it, it felt like, I don't have a twin sister, but it felt like I had a twin sister that passed away. Mm -hmm. And for the longest time, I looked for her, I wanted her back. And that's just not, that's just not possible. So it's it's one of these things where I I, I, I haven't gotten over it. I've learned to live with it. It's, gotcha. it's, it's. Yeah, so. So I got a drink from my Tinkerbell coffee cup. <laughs> um, very masculine. Christy Gray, who is your hero? Like we kind of talked about this, but I, I think this gives a really cool insight into you. Who's your hero? Okay, so my hero is my husband. He mm -hmm. was the he was the one that was there when it happened. He scooped me up and uh, carried me to you know to safety, and and he scooped me up in, in several other ways too. He's a great guy with a great personality, and and he's he's my hero. That's pretty awesome that you said that. I kind of 
like it's it's a different type of answer when we were talking earlier we've talked before offline for people that are listening and you have a really you just have a kind of a dynamic story a dynamic life like you've got the soul surfer type of life you know maybe it wasn't a shark attack yours was a boat and then you went out and you just made life it wasn't just being i'm adaptive it was like this is just who i am i'm christy gray i go out and do stuff like that you talked about getting involved in a fashion industry stuff like that that's front that's more than front lines than vlogging because vlogging you could be vlogging about technical stuff or what you like that day now we're talking about appearances like appearances all day and you're dealing with you know you have a limb difference and you're going to be talking and working within an appearance-based industry are you uncomfortable with that idea no i'm i'm very comfortable with that idea and it, and and so it took me a while to get there but i'm there now so that's all that matters yeah that's what for me i don't feel like i've gotten there so um i feel like i'm still like sometimes i'm uncomfortable sometimes i just want to wear a pair of jeans or something and just kind of not talk about it that day i don't know it's hard to explain but some days it just gets tiring you're just like uh yeah i was born this way i'm okay blah, blah, blah. you know like the whole thing the whole story with that with now anything. i can't say that i can't say that i haven't been there before <laughs> so, yeah. yeah like there's times i just want to go i uh by the time your story air interviews will have another guest that's on and she said something that was really cool it was like she her date didn't know for like the first four dates that she was missing her hand. And I'm like, I mean, I did the same thing in my life where like even my wife, she didn't know about my surgery. It was colder weather. I was in jeans. Like we didn't have to address it. I just had a limp. I guess she assumed like I fell off a horse or I don't know, got hit by a train or something. But like anyways, you know, like like the reality is, is I, I got to hide it. So um, it was something that maybe it's not addressed much in, in you know, a lot of people's lives. All right, Christy Gray, you need to pay back and help the community. And I'm kidding when I say need, need, but like there's a lot of people that want that platform. They want to do that. When they're listening to me, sometimes they want to know how to podcast like me. And it's very simple. And I try to help them with that. But when you're helping them, you also like for me, I have to explain like this podcast episode takes a tremendous amount of time and post production or even preparing with questions and coordinating time and stuff like that. But for me, vlogging, is worse. Vlogging is a ton of work. How long does it take for you to get out one decent vlogging video? Okay, so it takes me all week long. Yeah. All right, so Monday I'm thinking about it. Tuesday I'm writing it. Wednesday I'm videoing it. Thursday I edit it for like six to seven hours. Friday it posts at three fifteen. Saturday I'm taking a break. Sunday I'm sleeping. Rinse, lather, and repeat. Monday it starts all over again. <laughs> How do you make the process enjoyable when it's the grind? Uh, well, I take time for myself, Saturday, Sunday. And if ever I, I take time, you know, breaks and stuff like that, it's not just all, it's just a few little sums each time. Yeah. Positive comments. You get a lot of them on YouTube. Like what are your favorite comments you're receiving? Oh my gosh. Just people telling me, thanks. You've helped me. Oh, um, I, I wash dishes just like you, that, that common ground. I just love that most popular tutorial you've done you're doing tutorials like i should probably be doing tutorials for club footers too in fact there's a probably a video releasing soon about questions I've, it's just easier to answer questions instead of typing all the time and so, but like what's the most like what is the most watched tutorial that you've done so far most watched uh well now i do like where i painted my fireplace that was a big deal to me just because i was doing it one-handed and i wouldn't do a large project like that just because of the things that are involved with the sander and stuff because i do take extra precautions to take care of my good side so but yeah whenever i did the the fireplace that was a lot of fun i actually completed it and i i love the way it looks yeah, we gotta we gotta talk about this backdrop. It's one of the best backdrops <laughs> I've seen. Like, come on, most people are just like outside at a park bench or something. Like, I set up a little thing here too. Like that backdrop is incredible. Like, come on, people that are watching this, this is what you need to do. You need a nice calming backdrop when you do an interview. So, well done on the fireplace. I'll watch these tutorial videos. All right. So, what has your injury? What has your injury? taught you about life like this is a serious injury it's pretty scary what I, I mean it's not pretty scary it's really scary what you went through what has it taught you about life just to be grateful to to wake up one day and be missing i would have never dreamed in a million years that i would wake up to that reality so 
Now I try to, to be grateful for everything, for anything, for those little successes, for those big successes, wherever you are in your journey, that's what to be grateful for. You know, hey, today I did the laundry. That's a good thing if it's something that was something you didn't think you could do. I, I can remember when I was so scared to even try to put toothpaste on a toothbrush. How am I going to do this? Everything was so overwhelming. So be grateful for those, those little successes and the big ones as well. First step. What's the very first step you took to get moving in the direction of sharing your voice, your story? Acceptance. I, I finally just came to terms with this is me. I am, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a great person. And so things happen, but you just got to, you have got to pick yourself up and, and know that there is, there's, there's good things that can come from being in a terrible situation. I say that too. I feel like, I wouldn't change what happened to me. I would never change it. You know, I come from a family of stock that could definitely play college football. It does happen in our family, you know, and, and I could have did that. And I have all the tangibles except my feet. And, you know, that was something I wanted to be when I was younger and I wouldn't change anything because that adversity has made me such a compassionate person compared to what maybe I might not have been. Adversity is such a beautiful thing sometimes. Children are born like you. Children have accidents like you. Children ask you questions that aren't from, you know, from the adaptive community. But what do you tell children that are like you? Okay, yeah. So I'll tell you a story. Uh, one time I was at an event and I noticed there was a little boy there and he was just like me. Only his was the left hand. And so it was about this, this much um, of an arm left. And so I had noticed him. I don't think, well, obviously they didn't notice me, but when we were leaving, there was a corridor kind of, and they were, there's people all around and I saw them. And as I'm walking past them, the mom says, oh, do you see that lady? Do you see her? She's just like you. You're not the only one. And so I want kids to know, Hey, you are not the only one. Find your people. You don't look for them. And then two, also, it's okay to be different. It's, yeah. I actually love being different. I do. It took me a while to get there, but I love it. Christy Gray, um, I hope we can gather again together and talk and just sit and hang out and see where you're at next and collaborate together because I feel like you're, you're a sleeping giant. You're already blowing up everywhere. Your story's there. And since you've had this acceptance, you've gone out and shared your voice i'm sure you're feeling great about the differences you get to make in your life and others lives but thank you for being here everybody her stuff is in the notes right now that means her social media contacts her channel everything is there and so welcome her into our audience our community thank you christy gray for being here thank you so much for having me it's been a blast remember go to livingadaptive.com to find previous episodes show notes contacts for guests like this guest, links to social media accounts, and a bunch of other good stuff. So go there. Peace.